Okay, so just a couple quick ideas for practicing Handel Beret. Um, the second measure, there's a C in that second measure, a half note that I feel very strongly needs to have some direction through it. So it's um, going to be on an up bow, so why don't you put yourself at the tip. What I want you to do is play a C, you're going to start out quiet and crescendo as you get to the frog. Okay, so let's just do a couple of those. Quiet and low. Okay, now once you've done that like two or three times, you might add the next two notes. Okay, so I'm starting quiet. So basically I'm just trying to lead it through those. Let me show you what this sounds like in context. So I've got... can die on that note and you don't want your phrase to die on that note. So if you save your bow at the beginning and then speed it up and add a little weight, you'll be able to pull through that note. Now for your planning, you need to be at the tip to be able to do that. So I would suggest starting the first note of this piece a little further out in the bow than you might expect. Okay, don't be too close to the frog. So if I'm right here and I stay kind of out in this part of the bow. <laughs> thing happens right here. Um, whenever we have these eighth note um, sort of uh, sequences, ascending sequences, we need to think about um, what's called terraced dynamics. And that means basically you start the first group of notes, let's say pianissimo. What is the note? Yeah, there it is. So each one, you're going to be just one level higher in your dynamics. So I would probably practice that, separating the groups out. And you could do this one of two different ways. You could consider that the first group is... And the next group is... And the next group... And the next group... And notice I'm using more and more bow on every single one, the next group... Okay, or you can think of the groups um, starting one note later. So I've got, and then, and then, and then, and the most bow. Okay, regardless of exactly how you think of those groups being organized, you still need to just be building through them to have a fantastic crescendo on those ascending lines. And that happens like four times in the piece. So get good at it at this one and you'll be good at it for everyone. Um, okay, this piece repeats itself a lot. Uh, pretty much if you learn like half of it, you know the whole thing. Um, but there's one shift here that I think is worth going over. And that's in measure 17. Um, we start out just going to second position. <laughs> check my intonation with that double stop. Do that a few times, perhaps. One more time. And now, since double stops are such a fantastic way to practice intonation, we're going to go for a slightly harder double stop. Let's try this G we just played with the next C, first finger. Okay, so now we're in extended second position. And you know, if you can play this double stop in tune, you'll really know that you have the proper structure in your hand, um, that, that extended second position, hand position. Um, so maybe I'll put it with the rest. right or you can be perfectly in tune um, and it sounds beautiful so it's worth getting to that point you know kind of scooch your finger around until you find it and then you'll know you've got that hand position established and it'll be there probably for you in the future when you come back uh, and then the next couple notes 
we've got the fourth finger A, G sharp, open A. It's worth just doing a couple times. And back to first position. Let's play that whole little chunk from the, uh, the first D, a starting up bow. Make sure we've got that hooked bow in the middle, starting up and a hooked bow up in the middle. Here we go. for that C that we've got. One, two, three. Thank you. 